Welcome to the Nukipedia Pipcast by Junk Radio. Nukipedia is the Fallout Wiki. For November, we're going twice a month, so expect more in your feed in the next two weeks. This episode, after the news, we're going into a deep dive into the order of mysteries in our Fallout History show. I'm really excited for this as we have some top-notch performers. Not only do we have a special guest starring Jess from the Fallout feed taking on the role of the mistress herself, we're also debuting a new performer in Goddess Nerd as her daughter Olivia. You do not want to miss this. After that, although the midterms might be over, we're still celebrating democracy, including reasons why you should vote for Thomas More for first citizen of Vault City, who has sponsored this podcast. I know all of you NCR fans out there will want to get right behind him. After that, we're going to go straight to the top. We've got the president of the Enclave Reclamation Authority, President Dash himself, talking to us about one of the most notable roleplay groups in Appalachia. But before we get into the news, here is a word from one of our sponsors. I'm Junk Radio's LS, and if you're like me, technology can be a bugger to work with sometimes. That's why I use the Big Book of Science to help me out with all my science and technology-related questions. The Big Book of Science, available at your nearest local library or Super Duper Mart. I'm Agent C with your Nukipedia Network News. Bethesda has warned public test server players this week that they may be missing some weapons, but only if they've been cheating. Legacy weapons are impossible to get during actual gameplay, but only by hacking the game will see a reduction in damage and the mod removed. If yours is missing, will Cheetah Cheetah Pumpkin Eater? At the moment this is only on the public test server, no word on when this will apply to the main game. This past month the Fallout community has been showing grief for the loss of Ferret Bedouin. His contributions to the Fallout franchise include Fallout 4, Fallout 76, and the Van Buren Project. Fans have been working on fundraising to help his family, and you'll find a selection of these links in our retrospective on his career on our wiki page, which we'll link in the description below. If you're looking for news on Starfield and Bethesda has you covered, they've been talking to Todd again on their website. He's let a few things slip, such as that Starfield is inspired by, amongst other things, hard sci-fi tabletop RPG Traveller, a game famous for allowing your character to die during character creation. I don't think we'll have to fear that, however, as Todd announced that they have been making changes to the fuel system in-game so that when you run out of fuel, the game doesn't come to an end with you stuck in deep space. The Fallout Daily discussion Twitter account has hosted a debate on YouTube on whether the railroad is a force for good in the Commonwealth. You'll find a link to that in the description below. Turning now to wiki news, we'll have a couple of votes coming up in our discussion forum. One seeks to spell out a safeguarding policy directing special rights users to report such issues to the appropriate trust and safety teams, and another seeks to end bickering and drama particularly relating to past events by drawing a line under these events. They should be appearing on the forum shortly, and we'll include a link again to these in the description. Budding Fallout creators, get your entries in for the Fallout Film Festival. This festival will be working with Fallout for Hope, and is taking entries until the 10th of December. And lastly, just a point of clarification, we did tweet out on the 25th of October a claim from IMDB that the first episode of the Fallout TV series involved a Brotherhood invasion of Vault City. I just want to take this opportunity to say that based on the word choices, grammar and a later image released by Kilda Films that we're convinced that this entry on IMDB is a crowdsourced contribution and may not reflect the actual script of the show. This is your Nukipedia Network News. If you have a community event or Fallout content you'd like announced, email us at nukaFalloutWiki at gmail.com or tweet us at Nukipedia. Coming up next is Fallout History, where we're delving deep into the mystery that is the Order of Mysteries. It's November 16th, 2086. Seneca Rocks, West Virginia. I'm... I'm so sorry, Olivia. I wish... I wish it hadn't come to this. Hero to the end. Brody, you can come out now. God, I've never seen anything like that. That's it then? Yeah, she was the last. It's all over. Give me a hand, would ya? Let's get out of here. Sorry. One last thing. Brody, what? And with that... The Order of Mysteries passed into history. But what could bring a mother and daughter to this point? 
where a daughter seeks to destroy everything her mother has created, followed by killing her mother. And why did it lead to her own death? I'm Lemon Train, and this is Fallout History, where we explore the stories behind some of the biggest events in Fallout history. This month, we explore the tragedy of the Order of Mysteries. To understand how this tragedy occurred, we need to turn back the clock to 2077, before the Great War. The Silver Shroud, a mysterious vigilante, had seen success for decades in radio plays and comics produced by Hubris Comics, and was making the big jump to television, and her longtime voice Shannon Rivers, aged 53 at the time, wanted to be ready, undertaking an impressive training regime to allow her to shine on the silver screen. Her inventor husband, Frederick, was equally up for the challenge. We finished off the basement with two days to spare. I might even have time to squeeze in that little folding screen I've been toying with. Zack and his boys got the mainframe online this morning. I let him test out the Hall of Trials while I put it through its paces. Worked like a dream. Laser turrets are still a mite touchy, though. Burned that toupee clean off. She loved it. I've never seen her so happy. Meanwhile, Shannon and Frederick were ignorant of the harm that this preparation had done with their daughter, Olivia. We're actually going to miss the camping trip this year. I figured Mom was planning some kind of surprise, even if it was just for a weekend. We've been going to the same spot every year for as long as I can remember. It's always been our special place. Those trips are the one chance we had to just be together, where I didn't have to play the perfect daughter, the flawless student. Where I could just be myself. I'm looking forward to college. I'm ready to get out of here. Shannon's dream was not to be. She would be discarded by the studio in an act of blatant age discrimination on the 22nd of October, 2077. Babowski played me for a fool. After a week of dress rehearsals, he called me in to say they'd made other arrangements for the role of the mistress. It wasn't hard to figure out who. He had a portrait of Claire Riddell, that airbrained strumpet on his desk. He was planning this all along. I gave that bastard a piece of my mind. I've been the voice of the mistress of mystery for 26 years. It's the role I cared about most, the character I championed every time creative tried to set up another love triangle or damsel in distress plot. And now I'm being cut out. Vivi says corporate's already in talks to hire Riddell for next season serials. Damn them. The next day, the Great War came upon the world. We don't know what life was like for the Rivers family in the immediate aftermath, but in July 2078, about nine months later, Shannon would record the following. When the weather finally broke, we made for Charleston to replenish our supplies. On the way back, we were accosted by hooligans on the road. Frederick tried to pay them off. Some fresh water? A few hundred dollars? They just laughed. When they laid hands on Olivia, something in me snapped. I don't think they expected the old bitch to put up a fight. But my training just took over. I didn't even hesitate. In less than a minute, they were all laid out on the ground. I think a couple of them were dead. We had a long talk about the incident. I expected Olivia to be as frightened as I was, but she was exhilarated. Like I was suddenly a real hero. She wants me to train her. I wish it wasn't necessary, but Frederick has a point. The world has changed. We won't be around forever. One way or another, she has to learn to defend herself. But is that enough? What kind of future does she have if the world has fallen to pieces? And what about girls who don't have anyone to stand up for them? Shannon began venturing out as the mistress. Although she felt silly, she also felt the outfit gave her confidence. Shannon believed her family was on board, and although her husband was, when it came to her daughter, she was mistaken. The whole hero thing was cute for a while. Lover really is good at it. But it's gone to her head. Now she wants to adopt those rats she found rooting for our garbage? And train them? I tried to argue with her. 
There are whole caravans of refugees on the road. We can't save everyone. Who do you help? And who do you pass over? Why take in free strangers and send the torrents boy away? We barely made it through last winter as it was. We have to think of ourselves, too. Those rats were a trio of orphaned children. Clarissa, Eve, and Amy. All younger than Olivia. The boy will come back to. More would follow. Olivia would, however, accept the training that her mother offered, as would her adoptive sisters. Despite her initial misgivings, the Order would undertake its mission as guardians of a wasteland without casualty, and expanding in number until 2086. I always knew this day would come, but that doesn't make it any easier. These girls are my daughters. Every time I post a mission, I know one of them might not come back. But we have to press on. The raiders are gaining strength. If we don't keep them in check, who will? For Olivia, long-simmering resentment finally bubbled back to the surface. Her adoptive sister, Clarissa, died on a mission. Then she was overlooked for the mistress of novices' position. What people need is order. They need leadership. The responders are weak. The brotherhood can care about anyone but themselves. The order? We could do anything. We could rule Appalachia. Instead, we hide. We cower. No more. The raiders may be hard, but they live in the real world. Not this fantasy. What they do is real. It matters. It's time I come out of the shadows. And damn anyone who gets in my way. I found my opening. I've been taking checkpoint missions trying to scope out the raiders. And I recognized one. Brody. Kid used to live next door. Through Brody, the boy turned away by Shannon. A contract was struck between her and the Cutthroats gang. Olivia would sell out her sisters and the Order, eventually culminating with her own mother. In exchange, she demanded a blank check, anything she wanted. The Cutthroats agreed to this bargain. Olivia's plan led her to leak to the Cutthroats for Order's missions for the next two months. And the bodies would soon start to pile up, until Shannon stood alone. It's finally over. I'm gonna burn the order, the manor, everything. Burn all to the ground. If you get this, if you want to see me again, meet me under a special place. On my birthday. You still owe me that trip. And there, they and the order would take its final moments on Seneca Rocks, leaving behind a dying mother embracing the dying daughter who betrayed her, and who, in turn, was betrayed herself on the 16th of November, 2086. Have you heard the word today? Hear the word. The word shall set you free. The word, my friends. The word is selfishness. Mix in a slew of arrogance, and what do you have? Vault City, in all its self-righteous, slave-trading glory. Can you not hear the cries of those that suffer outside our walls? It is time to hear the wailing of our kin outside these walls and let them in. We have more than enough to feed and shelter our brothers. We need not be rich when so many are poor. They need our help, yet still we turn a blind eye. Why can we not share our wealth? Why must others suffer when aid lies within these walls? We must open the gates of Vault City and embrace the outside world. Know that it is time, time for the city, built on sin and slavery, to open its gates to everyone. Vault City's advanced technology should be shared, not hoarded. All men have the right to the fruits of the old world. Tell me, brothers, why does Vault City have slaves? I thought this was a free city. Slavery shall damn this city. We should free the slaves and embrace them as brothers for a city built on slavery can never be truly free. I am Thomas More, preacher of the word and the truth. This city is built on sin and slavery, and I have come to set it right. The NCR is trying to bring honor and government to all of California, and Vault City has the power to make it happen. Think of the good we could do with access to Vault City's technology. A vote for me as first citizen is not just a vote to save others, but a vote to save our very own souls.
How better to celebrate the festival of democracy that is election season than to speak with the president himself, President Dash of the Enclave Reclamation Authority. Thank you for joining us, Mr. President. It is always a pleasure. I'm very happy to speak with the poor, I mean, the uh, people who are not on my tax bracket, if you will. Always a pleasure. We're, we're very honoured. Mr. Could President, you... could you tell us about your little enclave? I would love to. Uh, the Enclave Reclamation Authority is a, at the end of the day, we're a family. Uh, we primarily use the Poseidon System Network or PSN systems for communication. Uh, so if you utilize that, you're free to contact us and join up. However, if you don't, we're still happy to count you as one of our own. Uh, we primarily engage in events on the uh, system uh, you know, we utilize a variety of mediums to conduct operations, uh, with our primary goal being to restore America back to the uh, good old days. That sounds certainly like a worthy goal. How important yeah. is democracy to the Enclave? Oh, it's very important. Uh, for the legislative branch, uh, we won't implement it until we are certain that the uh, democratic process is fair and just. So I have taken the burden of being the sole representation of the people with uh, unlimited power. It is a really heavy burden uh, not having the legislative branch to lean on. But until we are 100% sure that democracy can be truly implemented in a fair and just system, there won't be a legislative branch. And that is a sacrifice I'm willing to take. It must require some very strong shoulders on your part. It does. I've been told I have very broad shoulders. And then we installed cybernetics to make them even broader. So I have to ask, how did you become president of the Enclave? <laughs> well, that is a long story. One thing is that we don't use the term president of the Enclave. It's president of the United States of America. My authority expands to all citizens. Uh, the notion that you didn't vote for me, uh, you're not my president, please put the gun down. That doesn't apply. I'm the president of the United States of America. But to answer your question, uh, once I arrived at uh, the facility that we now operate in, uh, we breached the facility. I gallantly led the charge into near certain demise, but through my sheer brilliance, I was able to circumvent that. Um, we then found my father lying in a cryopod, um, who at the time was acting commander. And after some incidents where... A cord was unplugged. Uh, we then unfortunately had to shut down his uh, uh, life forceness. Uh, you know what I mean? It's nothing to worry about. Essentially, I was the only acting authority figure, and with complete control of the base defenses, I asked them, Do you vote for me as your president? And 100% of them said yes. Sounds like a ringing endorsement there. It is. Within your operations, have you been working on any movies or any other content to help spread the word? Of course we are. Of course we are. Uh, we are actively searching for uh, individuals to assist in cinematography. My degree was in architecture, not cinematography, so it's not my strong suit. Uh, but if it's something you're skilled at, please give us contact. Uh, we're also, of course, looking to uh, construct mediums of you know, websites, uh, little pamphlets to assist uh, your day-to-day uh, -day lives as a uh, dirt farmer or whatever it is you do, uh, in any capacity that we can. And if someone actually wanted to be more than a dirt farmer and actually join the Enclave, what should they do? That is an excellent question. Uh, if you wish to join our operations, uh, you can contact me through uh, the Poseidon System Network. It's just president underscore dash. You can contact me on Twitter. It's also president underscore dash. Or you can contact me through uh, this cord uh, communications network. It's uh, president dash, and then the little numbers are 4077. But if you just look up president dash uh, through whatever terminal search uh, you use, you should be able to find me. I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, once you can contact me, you are allowed to send me a direct message. Uh, do know that my responses may or may not be automated, depending on the time of the day or if I feel like dealing with you. Uh, so through that, you should be able to reach me. Uh, in the future, we do plan to have a website to fully automate 
the recruitment process on that end. If you have any skills or anything that you have a leaning towards, uh, you, it is encouraged that you say what they are before we lump you in the cannon, um, the, not the cannon fodder, the Enclave Infantry Corps. It's a very uh, venerable position that I'm sure many people would die to be a part of. It's certainly a goal worth dying for there. Definitely. Uh, thank you again for taking time out of your busy day there, Mr. President. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on this broadcast of the Nukepedia Pipcast by Junk Radio. We'll be back in about two weeks with Creature Feature with LS, who's going to talk to us about those sneaky nightkin. And another episode of the Mod Squad with Fallout Nuevo Mexico. I'm so excited to return back to the American Southwest, aren't you? Join us then, and make sure you check out our feed for our previous shows. And as always, please remember to turn off your Pip-Boy.